Hello YouTube, this is Sasha for some IP case. Welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to continue where we left off in the last tutorial. And as you remember in the last tutorial, we were working with degrees of freedom, we were working on sparsity matrices, sparsity matrix patterns, and how they we wanted to cluster them around the diagonal. In this tutorial, we're gonna be using all of that stuff that we learned in that tutorial and bring it here in order to solve a Poisson and Laplace equation. Uh, I'm, in this tutorial, it's going to be, we're going to be solving it, we're going to go over the code, solving it, and visualize it in GNU plot. In the next tutorial, I will show you how to install a, a, a really cool program called Visit. Visit is one of two programs that are heavily used in the scientific community in the United States and national labs. So I'll show you how to install it. It's free, it's open source, and I'll show you how to start using it and how we can open our, uh, our the stuff that we do here, the solutions that we produce using DL2, and we can open it in this, uh, in this uh, other software package, which is very, very powerful. You can manipulate variables, you can, mani you can do all kinds of stuff, but that, that's in the next tutorial. In this tutorial, Let's just solve uh, Laplace and the Poisson equation using the program here that we have in front of us. This is the class, the public uh, step three class, and this is the public, uh, there's your constructor, your functions, there's five functions that are private, make it, you've seen it before, set up, assemble, assembling the, the work for the matrix and then solving and then outputting the result. This is the triangulation you've seen before in two dimensions, finite element, you've seen that before in the last tutorial. We work with these three in the last tutorial using the degree of handler and the sparsity matrix, sparsity pattern, so that's not new. Uh, here we're making the grid, you've seen that before. It's going to be a hypercube, as you can see, and it's going to be a triangulation of negative one to one, and that's going to be reflected in the graph when we visualize it. And here we're setting up the system. Uh, this is uh, using just like very similar to what we did in the last tutorial, working with the uh, sparsity pattern, but we're also making a copy because we're going to be reinitializing it here in the system right hand side and then also in the as part of the solution. Also, we manipulate the degrees of freedom. This is where the update values, update gradients, update uh, the determinant values. It feels like uh, like it's missing something um, here, but it's just we packaged. It's just in, in a weird way. Here we got the degrees of freedom per cell. Remember, here are these the active cell iterators that we explained as uh, as they're being used. We show you how to do that for the cell matrix and for the right hand side of the cell. This looping here, creating the degrees of freedom, going through all the degrees of freedom per cell and the I and J, the gradient. And uh, I mean, we're going to, and here the uh, boundary values are being applied. We, um, boundary conditions, we are going to also go over these a little bit more in detail because some of these things will change in the next tutorial as we uh, go into a more general case like like i said in the at the beginning this is more of a particular case some things will be changing some things will be the same so i don't want to i don't want to go too much into these because some of things will change here is the solving so you can see this is your matrix, your K, your U, and your F. And this is our putting, oops, that's from the last tutorial. Sorry, guys. I got I haven't closed the, the thing yet. It's, it's still there. 
Uh, this here is the solution is created as part of the GNU plot public license. And then here you just make a run. When you call the run, it will make the grid, set up the system, assemble, solve, and output the results like I show you in the top. And here's your main, which you create the Laplace problem and just run it. Basically, that's all it does. That's your main right there, nice and small. So now let's just run it. And let me show you the CMake, like I like to show you, just in case you don't have one. Here's just the name of the executable, and it's using CC. And it's going to give me an error because I'm going to run Laplace. Actually, let's just run the, this one so I don't have to change it. So let's do CMake and then make. And then it created the executable, as you can see right there. Then I'm going to run it. Once I run it, it's going to give me the solution. It's going to give me, it's going to solve it. And it's also give it, going to give me a solution GPL file. So let's run it. And there it is. It's got your number of active cells, 1024, number of degrees of freedom, 1089, starting value, 0 0.12, and conversion steps, 48, and the value is 5.33 to the 13th. So basically, and it created, most importantly, it created this guy, Solution GPL. So now we're going to use GNU plot and open a terminal and then just like we did in the last tutorial set style data lines and then s plot solution gpl and there it is there's there's your nice uh, visualization of the solution if you want to hide certain things it looks cleaner you can do set hidden 3d and then replot again and then solution gpl and there it is it's a lot more cleaner and it's uh and it's really nice it's from negative one to one like we saw in the triangulation and if we roll the I'm, ro I'm rotating my mouse wheel you can change the the uh, ranges on the that is going through it's nice to see how it visualizes but this is the end of this tutorial. Remember, in the next tutorial, we're going to be showing this, but it's showing you in, in a whole different package, software package. And uh, if you like this tutorial, please click the like button, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you next time with another tutorial. Take care.